Namaste. In this video, we'll get ourselves acquainted with the term that is known as bonding. That is known as bonding. Now see, whenever we have two or more than two atoms, when they are combining with each other in order to form a molecule, in order to form a molecule, so whenever this particular molecular formation takes place, we observe that the potential energy of the system or the molecule is less as compared to individual atom. The as the potential energy of system is less as compared to individual atom, we see that molecule is stable. The molecule is stable. Now the formation of a molecule is uh, shown here with the help of one graphical representation for the formation of hydrogen molecule. Now, in this particular case, we observe that when two hydrogen atoms are far away from each other, there is no force of attraction present. As a result, the potential energy is considered as a zero because there is no attractive force developed. But when the two atoms come closer, when two atoms come closer, so at that time you observe that as they come closer, the attractive forces starts developing. Attractive forces starts developing that indicates the potential energy of the system gets lower down. At one junction, we'll reach where the potential energy of the system becomes minimum. Where the potential energy becomes minimum, we observe that the stable bond formation takes place. We observe stable bond formation takes place. So this particular distance at which the bond formation takes place, we consider it as a bond length. We consider it as a bond length, the distance present between the two nucleus of an atom. And the energy corresponding, that is minus 436 kilojoule per mole. Now still, if you try to bring them closer, after the formation of a bond, if you try to bring them closer, you observe that potential energy starts shooting up. Potential energy starts shooting up. So, let me have, this is a hydrogen A, this is another hydrogen B, which are far away from each other. So this is far away from each other. So potential energy is zero. But when you try to bring these two atoms closer, when you try to bring these two atoms closer, so you observe that the potential energy decreases potential energy decreases okay that means attractive forces increases okay now at the minimum distance you observe that the bond formation takes place that is overlapping of orbital takes place and results in a formation of minimum energy. So whenever we reach to this minimum energy level stage, your molecule becomes stable. Molecule becomes stable. Okay. Now, generally, it's been seen that a stable bond has been formed when two or more than two atoms combine and the energy of the system gets lower. So when the atoms are closer with each other, when the atoms are closer with each other, the energy of the system gets lower and the stable bond formation takes place. A stable chemical bond has been formed. So you have two atoms closer to each other, the energy of the system should be lower and that will result in a stable chemical bond formation. Now, if your bond is formed stronger, if your bond has been formed stronger, then we require more amount of energy to break that bond. So we require more amount of energy to break that bond and the energy required to break the bond is called as bond dissociation energy. Bond dissociation energy. <clears throat> so, a one particular point which can be stated here that whenever we have a stable bond formation should be there Okay, so the formation of bond is that the potential energy in the system should be lower. 
the combining atom should approach each other and the potential energy of the system should be lower now a very conclusive theory for the chemical bonding was put forward by one of the famous scientists g and lewis that is gilbert newton lewis along with cosell along with cosell he listed down few points whenever the bonding takes place in an atom so he stated whenever the bonding happens in an atom it totally depends upon the number of electron in the valence shell it totally depends upon the number of electron in the valence shell now it has been observed that if an atom of an element if an atom of an element has got eight electron in the valence shell then it will make the atom stable it will make the atom stable like that's what we try to see like inert gases okay like your neon argon krypton xenon radon they have eight electron in valence shell and that's why they are stable that's why they are stable but atoms of other element are not stable atoms of other element are not stable why they do not possess octet or eight electron in the valence shell so what they do in order to attain stability what they do in order to attain the stability the atom of an element may tend to lose electron like i have magnesium atomic number 12 electron configuration 282 2, will lose two electron from the valence shell get converted into mg plus 2 ion and attain the stable electronic configuration of neo some of the atom of an element may gain an electron so i have a chlorine atomic number 17 287 will gain one electron and get converted into cl minus 1 electronic configuration now becomes 288 so attains the electronic configuration of nearest normal gases like neon and argon in this case now because of this tendency because of this tendency to lose and gain electron because of this tendency to get lose or gain electron it's been seen that and by losing and gaining electron they tend to attain the octet in the valence shell they tend to attain octet in the valence shell so because of this tendency to get stabilized and complete in eight electron in outermost shell this causes the atom of other elements to be chemically combined with each other or to be reactive see this other atom of an element do not have octet completed so what they tend to do they tend to lose electron just like magnesium is doing they tend to gain electron just like chlorine is doing in doing so they result in the formation of compound that means they chemically combine with each other so just i'll uh, extend this particular example only over here like i have a magnesium i have a magnesium atom which is having two electron in its valence shell when combines with chlorine when combines with chlorine having seven electron in its outermost shell so i'm drawing the seven crosses okay. here also seven electron as magnesium is bivalent it will combine with two chlorine so magnesium loses one of the electron to one chlorine another electron to another chlorine gets converted into mg plus 2 as it is losing electron and chlorine gains electron so these are the seven electrons of chlorine which are shown with a cross and this is one of the electron which it received from a magnesium the chlorine acquires minus one charge here and this is another chlorine it also has got seven electron in its outermost shell which are represented with seven cross and one electron of magnesium it also acquires minus one charge it results in the formation of stable compound NgCl2 results in formation of NgCl2 now here if you look at i have taken into consideration only the electron 
which is present in outer motion which is present in outer motion okay thank you for watching